Fluid, let's define it. It has a very simple definition, a substance that flows. A substance that flows, okay. Okay, a substance that flows. Okay, so we're gonna talk about uh, two kinds of, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot one more thing. Uh, pledge problem, yeah. So a new pledge problem is out now, or it's, we're gonna hit release on Canvas. So it is about energy. A pledge problem on energy, it's due next Tuesday at noon, a week from today at noon. Then you'll have a pledge on momentum that you did, a pledge on energy, and the exam is on momentum and energy and springs and elasticity, okay? But yes, a new pledge will be out. I know you can do it. <clears throat> okay, so there are two fundamental kinds of fluids that we think about because there are two states of matter that flow, right? There's a gas and there's a liquid. So fluids are very complicated. To really understand them, we, have to, we do have to think a little bit about their microscopic properties, okay? We can't just say, oh, all fluids are the same like physics usually does. We have to actually think about them a little bit, okay? So first, let's talk about a gas, right? So you may know a little bit about a gas. These are non-interacting molecules. This is like one of the first things you learn in sort of your junior high physical chemistry course, that a gas is the little molecules bouncing around like little bowling balls, okay? Um, uh, let's see. The other one is that they are, sorry, oh, they're, they're compressible. You can have a gas in a container and if you squeeze it, you can actually make the gas's volume smaller because it's just little balls bouncing around, so they just don't have as far to bounce around, right? So we think of gases as um, compressible, all right? Okay, the other one is their density is low. It's so low. The density is low. How low is it? Say, how low is it? It's so low, the mean free path is longer than the trip to Brown. Thank you. BSWF, am I right? I don't know, somebody wrote that on here. Um, oh yeah, yeah, so it's, it's low. It's so low, I've lost where I am in my notes, that the weight is irrelevant. That weight is irrelevant. So we don't actually consider gravitational forces when we think about the pressure in a gas. How do you get the pressure in a gas? PV equals nRT. We're not doing that, right? But if you took some chemistry or some physical chemistry course a long time ago, you may recall PV equals nRT, or Boyle's law, PV equals PV, all that, right? So you get the pressure in a gas by thinking about pressure and volume and temperature, not really about weight. And it's because the densities are so low, okay? So what that means is it's irrelevant. And what I gotta say though is on a human scale, Right? So we're basically going to say that the pressure of the, of, the, of, the, of the atmosphere is constant when you go from like the floor to the top of my head. Now in reality, gas does have some density and does have some weight. And the pressure actually does change as you go from the floor to the top of my head. But it's so small you can't even tell. So we just pretend in this room, in anything you do, uh, the pressure is constant all the way from the top to the bottom of the room. That's what we mean by the human scale. If you measure the pressure all the way up to space, then it does go down, right? If you go high enough, there's enough uh, mass and the, the weight does matter, and then the gravitational force changes as you go far away, very complicated, right? So the pressure and the weight effects do matter as you go high enough, or if you go to other planets, the pressure might be different. It just depends on how big the planet is, how much atmosphere it has. You can use this information to embarrass your children at the National Air and Space Museum. They said, take a picture like you're on Mars. So there I am, taking a picture like I'm on Mars. Right, the atmosphere of Mars is very thin at the surface, much less than it is here, okay? Uh, let's just go through my vacation photos. Would that be more interesting? You're right, actually. <laughs> it would be a lot more interesting. Um, okay, so that's gas. So the class, this, what we're gonna do is mostly about liquids, okay? We do have to think about gas, but mostly when we think about the gas, we just think it's applying atmospheric pressure uh, to the top of the, of the, of the liquid. Okay, so we're not really gonna do detailed uh, fluid flow in gases. We're gonna really focus here on the liquids, okay? So here's the, uh, you know, junior high, no, middle school, whatever, um, definition. The molecules 
stick, but move past each other. There you go, kind of an idea. And you've all done the little museum exhibit. You push the button and they move around and this is a liquid. Um, we say that fluids or that liquids are incompressible or that water is incompressible. That's completely incorrect, okay? Water is compressible. It's incompressible relative to a gas, okay? So the compre I looked up a few, like the compressibility uh, of water is about 10,000 times more than a gas. Or uh, the compressibility is 10,000 times less than a gas. So it's much less <coughs> compressible than a gas. But it's like uh, 100 times less uh, or more compressible than like metal, okay? So it's not super incompressible. It's just among the different kinds of fluids, these are the ones that are incompressible. And for the problems we're gonna do, we don't really consider the compressibility. You know, if you put, doing some hydraulics problem, and you put a big car on top of a fluid, you don't say, what's the Young's modulus of the fluid? How much are we compressing it here? You could, and it would be like a 1% difference in the answer. All we really care about is the weight of the fluid. So you may, if you like, go through and pretend it's incompressible. I'll put quotes on it to remind you it doesn't. In fact, the whole lecture, all of this entire course, there's quotes around the whole thing. And if you want to know why, you've got to take Dr. Stinson's quantum for whatever. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, but then the, the final bullet is that the liquid is dense. So the weight, the gravitational force matters, okay? So there's the non-equation part of this lecture. Now let's get to the good part. The equation part. Okay, so just setting it up for you there. There we go. Let's start with some important properties of fluids um, that we gotta have defined well and know how to deal with, okay? Properties of fluids, there's three we care about. All right, here we go. Volume, okay, they're not complicated. You think you know volume, don't you? What is the MKS unit of volume? Oh, we use V, it's in meters cubed in the MKS system, so that's really annoying. If you wanna do a problem with uh, newtons and kilograms, you gotta do your volumes in meters cubed. So just as a reminder, a more normal unit you might think about is a liter. So we don't try to make confusing unit conversion problems on purpose, but sometimes it happens. So how many, a liter is what? It's a thousand mils. Oh, if you work in a lab, you know a milliliter is called a mil, but a mil is a centimeter cubed. So a liter, a thousand mils, one mil is a centimeter cubed, and then you can get that back to meters by saying, well, this is uh, 10 to the three <coughs> uh, off of there. So we want to go 3, 3, 3, 10 to the minus 3 meters cubed, or 10 to the minus 6 uh, meters cubed. Did I botch that? Let's see. <laughs> oh, no, it's centimeters. 10 to, minus, 10 to the minus, let me read my notes. 3, yes. I thought that was millimeters. Right. Work the conversion out for yourself. A liter is 1 1,000th one of a meter cubed. Or if you think in terms of mills, sometimes when I have a problem in mills, that's a centimeter cubed, right? So if you want to take that all the way to a meter cube, then of course it's 10 to the minus six. It'd be very embarrassing if those are wrong, okay? This is all just, there's nothing fancy here. I just want you to be ready to think about the jump between liter volumes and meter volumes. And the key is this one, is that one centimeter cubed is one mil. With that, you can always get there. <clears throat> Unless you're talking in front of 150 people, then you're screwed up. Okay, so that's it, volume. Didn't fluids start off nice and easy? Volume, you're okay with volume. Length times width times height. All right, let's look at density. Density, okay. Density we define with rho. I will be very careful with my p's and rho's. Okay, I'll do my best to put a stem on the p and to just whew, the rho, all right? Uh, but a rho, because they look the same and they're all over these equations. The rho, uh, the mass density, is the mass over the volume. Right? Maybe you knew, and the MKS unit is kilogram per meters cubed. Oh, no. All right. So that's a weird unit. You might think <coughs> air doesn't weigh anything. How does air? Yeah, it does. Air has mass. So let's look at a few numbers just to give you an idea. 
Air is about one kilogram per meter cubed. Uh, if you took a meter cubed is really big, right? That's a lot of air. So about one. And water is about a well, water is by definition water is a thousand kilogram per meter cubed. So there's your two canonical fluids there. So when we say the density of uh, gas is low, that's what we mean. It's one one thousandth the density of water. So if you're talking about how the weight affects things, the uh, gas doesn't matter too much. Okay. A metal is like eight thousand. So metal is more than a gas. All right. I'm already tired. What is MKS? I don't know. Meters, kilograms, seconds, I guess. It's the standard unit, the Système International. No? OK. That's the standard units that we use in physics. I don't know how you made it uh, this far on the previous exams. Yes, kilogram, meters, seconds, everything else is derived from those. So when we're keeping everything in kilogram, meters per second, that's what MKS means. I guess it stands for meters, kilograms, seconds. <clears throat> All right, OK. OK, now the most important one, though, these are just fun properties. These is the intro. Let's talk about the real, the biggest property in fluids is, of course, the pressure. All right, pressure. OK, here we go. This is a mind blower. Here we go. It's a scalar property of fluids. What? Right, a scalar property of fluids that creates forces, that creates forces on surfaces. And it is in uh, newtons per meter squared, right? That's the MKS, if one of the MKS, the full MKS unit, it'd be kilograms per meter second squared, right? Because this is kilogram meters per second squared and a couple of meters in the bottom. OK, but that has a special name. It's called a Pascal, in parentheses PA is the abbreviation. So one newton meter squared is a Pascal, which is a really teeny for, uh, pressure. So a uh, uselessly small pressure. OK, um, so one thing to keep in mind is that it really is uh, a scalar. So if you see this, you say, well, if it's in newtons per meter squared, doesn't it have to be a vector? The answer is no, it doesn't have to be a vector. Okay, The unit doesn't make something a vector. The quantity makes it a vector. Okay, so just because it's in newtons doesn't mean it's a vector. Let's draw a gas here. Let's draw. Um, we're going to do pressure in terms of gases first, and then we'll do fluids. Okay, so here we go. If you were to zoom in, you know, really small, and you can see the atoms. There's one going that way, and maybe if you took a little pchem in elementary school, you know that they're going some average velocity with a Boltzmann distribution or something like that, and occasionally they bounce off the walls. Okay. So we would say, based on the properties of this gas, that this is at some pressure uh, P. And if this were physical chemistry, we would now talk about PV equals nRT and blah, 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 blah. But we're not going to, OK? Because instead, let's think about this. Let's look at the force. Or let's uh, think about this happening right here. Look at that. A gas molecule is going this way, bounced off the wall. Now it's going this way, right? What did it deliver to the wall? Impulse, right? What is impulse? Force times time. Ah, it delivered a force to the wall. This one bounced straight back. Oh, it delivered a much bigger force. This one was what we call a glancing blow. It delivered much less force. But on average, they deliver a force uh, to the wall. So the molecules deliver F to the wall. And if you add it all up together, you would say the total force they apply over the area of the wall is the pressure. So notice I put a magnitude bar on that vector to make it a scalar, because this thing needs to be a scalar. P equals FA. Let's see. Mm. But we do know that force is a vector. So let's think about the vector version for just a second. Here we go. Um, what we would say then, in terms of vector forces, we would say the force equals minus P A. So two weird things there. First of all, uh, what's going on here? We've got to have WTF on that negative sign. And also, we've got to make it a vector. And I said pressure can't be a vector. So what has to be a vector? The negative sign is a vector. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the area is a vector. That killed. OK. So two weird things about that equation. Area is a vector, and it's negative. Strange. 
after the collision molecules on each other and the walls are, are the collisions perfectly elastic? No. Uh, well, uh, it depends if the metal's clean or not. So a, a raw metal, the gas will stick, and then the gas builds up a layer on the surface, and then the molecules bounce off the layer, largely elastic. They can, give wall, they can give energy to the wall, but the wall also has energy, so it gives it back. So in the end, it's elastic. Yeah. But it depends on the chemical surface and everything. Um, OK, so area is a vector is one way we explain this. So I think we may have dealt with this before. I can't remember. But if you just have an area like this, some area A, it has a vector perpendicular to the surface sticking out. So you can always actually get a vector from an area. So I technically, I needed to put that on there as well. In physics, area is always a vector. Um, the magnitude is A, and the direction is perpendicular. But we're not going to worry too much about that, right? Because again, we're not doing gases. I'm just trying to get it in your head what pressure really is, OK? So we're going to stick to scalars. Um, this stands for why the flip-flop, OK? And here's the reason. So this molecule is bouncing off this way. Which way is the area? Well, it's perpendicular that way. So which way is the force? Oh, the force is that way. So technically, if you go deep into physics of forces and pressures, there's negative signs everywhere for that very reason. Although you could arbitrarily say, oh, no, no, the area is also this way. I mean, you can make the area whichever way you want. The only convention is if you have a closed surface, it sticks out. But it, but it depends. So basically, don't worry about this negative sign. Okay? We're just largely doing scalar magnitudes. Okay? But if you ever see a negative sign in that formula, that's a reason. Just preparing you for the future. Okay? You must understand pressure, OK? One of my kids, I'll protect their identity, had a congenital heart defect and had a valvuloplasty when they were three days old. OK, that's like where they put the balloon in, you know? And uh, the interns were all there telling, telling me the details of how they're going to do it. And uh, I said, they said, well, you know, right now the pressure's three, but we're hoping to get it to six. I said, oh, OK, like what unit? They're like, oh, I don't know, three to six. Right? They didn't know the unit. I was like, well, we just lost a Mars rover a few years ago over a unit, right? Remember that? I don't know if you know about that. The Mars Explorer, they sent the uh, thrust information from one group to another, and they sent it in MKS. And they thought it was in Newton or pound inches. And that's why we lost the Mars rover, or the Mars Explorer, before your time. Okay? So scientists do screw up units. So these interns didn't know what the unit was. I was like, OK, do, all, do you think you're using the same unit? And they go, oh, yeah, we're using the same unit. I was like, Jesus, OK. <laughs> And then I talked to the actual doctor who was going to do it, and he knew the unit, or at least he made up a unit, and I felt better. I don't know. But <laughs> in medicine, they often just assume they all use the same unit. But you know, hopefully, nobody gets that mixed up. Comedy killer, yes, the story about the. Uh, let's see, he's fine now. Let's see. Um, let's see. Okay, so what we're going to think about now is we've said that the air is under pressure, and the Force applies uh, a pressure. Ugh. Pressure applies a force to an area. Okay. So now what we're going to do is though we're going to think about the net force. If we say that, then if I hold this post-it note here, here's the area, and the atmosphere is applying a force. Oh my God! There it goes. I, as soon as I let go, no, that doesn't happen, right? Because we've got to think of the net force on the post-it note. The net force um, on an area depends. Um, on the pressure on each side. On each side. So up here, I implied there was a net force outward on the walls. Well, it depends on what's on the other side of the wall. Right? If there's the same pressure on the other side of the wall, then the wall doesn't feel anything. Right? It just depends. So here, for this demo, here is Hertzstein Amphitheater here. Right? Here's a little penguin over here, or whatever. Okay? And then the area is this post-it note that I just threw around like this. Right? So we hold up the post-it note like that. Let's see what it feels. This post-it note is our area. Uh, let's do a calculation. Oh my god, I just told my story about how important it is to use MKS units. Now I'm going to use uh, uh, Queen of England units, whatever they're called. F equals what? Uh, P times A. What's the atmospheric pressure? 
14.7 uh, pounds per inch squared, also known as PSI. Okay? So this is so common in the world that we are actually going to do some of our problems in PSI. Okay? Can't get away from it. You'd never be able to pump up your tires if you only think in Pascals. Okay? What's the area of a post-it note? It's on the MCAT. What is it? Quick. You don't know? It's three by three. It's nine inches squared. Nine inches squared. So the force, this is kind of mind-blowing. The force on one side of the post-it note is like one of you guys, 132 pounds. All right? It's like one of you, on average, close, standing on the post-it note. Is how much force is being applied to this side of the post-it note. You would think it would fly off. But of course, the reason is it's on both sides, like we said. So you have 132 pounds pushing it this way. Okay, But you can't possibly have a surface with one side, can you? No. So you also have 132 pounds pushing it that way. If you put a Mobius strip in the air, no, it has two sides. Okay, It doesn't fly around. That would be cool, though. Okay. Um, so F net, right? So this is F right. But F net equals F right plus F left, which equals zero. That's the point. Okay. Now, if you want to see it move, I could uh, apply a higher pressure to one side by blowing on it like this. <gasps> see, higher pressure on this side, and what did it do? It moved. It didn't accelerate because it bent, and then the elastic forces of the paper pulled it back up, and we reached some static equilibrium. But you can see there was a force blowing it that way. So that's a case where we, if we imbalance the forces, something will feel, a, you know, if we imbalance the pressures, something will feel a force. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, so now what we're going to do is uh, show you the how strong the atmospheric pressure is. Right, so this... We're going to get something really cold with liquid nitrogen here. Oh, look out. Watch your toes. There it comes. You're only in risk if you have a toe ring on. Does anybody have a toe ring on in the front row? No. OK, good. OK, so what we're going to do is I hear you like to uh, play with these. I don't know. It's like a red solo cup. OK? So what we're going to do is think all the way back to this. If I have this red solo cup here, and it has some pressure, and suddenly I cool it off and make those molecules go slower. If they go slower, when they hit the wall, they're going to give it less what? Less impulse. And they're going to give it less force. So just by slowing down the molecules, the pressure goes down. If the pressure goes down, then I have atmosphere on this side and I have less on this side. So maybe we'll see the atmosphere crush the red solo cup. Why is force in pounds? What is the unit of force? I'm using pounds for a unit of force. I'm just, that's what people do. Okay. Pound and Newton, I forgot the number. I'll look it up for you, though. Um, OK, so we got to do those. we got to put it in there, and we got to you know, let it cool up. But we got to seal it. So this is just a coaster, right? You can do this at parties. It's a coaster. If you can get liquid nitrogen, it's very cheap. And we'll just set it right there and see if it goes. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, what does FP and FL, oh, these are just, I was saying force right and force left. I was just thinking about how the two forces should balance each other out. All right. You're supposed to do this with a big metal drum, but then it's not very safe, is it? Wow, it worked yesterday. Mm, okay, this is too light. Here's the one I was using yesterday, but it blocks your view. It's too, it's like all cold in there. Okay. Oh, here we go. That'll hold it on there better. And then it's going to pop. Oh, no! <laughs> the drama of crushing the cup. So what's happening? The molecules are going slower and slower. And then the atmosphere wins. Look at that. I heard y'all like to sink cups. So if these are now cracked, and then you can sink the cup. Let's see. Let me try another one. You're supposed to like walk off all cool and lecture, and then it goes BAM! But you know, there's limits to how much we care. OK, let's move on. <laughs> Oh, that was exciting. OK. OK, so that's, oh, I didn't draw it. You don't need me to draw it. OK. So that shows you the atmosphere pressure is really big. We'll have more thinking about the atmospheric pressure uh, soon. Don't worry. So now what we want to do is uh, look at hydrostatics. OK, you now understand pressure. You understand the forces it makes. 
that all makes sense. So now we're going to get into hydrostatics and what a lot of homework problems can be about. Okay, let's see. So we've done the nature of pressure in liquids and gases, including sources and forces. And now, how gravity, now we're going to do hydrostatics. All right. Okay, so we're going to think about first, basically all of the fluid stuff we do divides into two categories. There's when the fluid is not moving and when the fluid is flowing. Okay, so we're starting when a, with a liquid <coughs> that is not uh, flowing. Okay, so the word for that is hydrostatics. Which you can probably guess what the root of that is, right? Fighting the snake with his head and it stopped moving because Medusa came or something like that. Um, let's see, so what we need is a big cylinder of water. Okay, we're going to think about a big cylinder of water. Oh, I'm sorry, that was hydrostatics. Like that. That's a cylinder of water. Can you explain the physics behind the red solo cup crushing? Oh, I was supposed to draw it. You see, when I deviate from my notes, right? It's red solo cup. Mm -mm -mm. Pressure, atmosphere, pressure, atmosphere. Put on the lid like that. Seal it up. Put it in the liquid nitrogen. And what happens now, the temperature goes down, which means the molecules don't move as fast. See how fast they were moving before? Now they slowed down. You can barely see that they're moving. And when they go slow, they don't apply as much force. So the net force was this way, right? And it crushed the cup. That was the idea. That's more fun than this, so thank you for asking. Okay, so now we have water in here. Now, whenever I draw a water surface, I put the little waves on it, but that's just like figurative, okay? That's to let you know that's a water surface. We're doing hydrostatics, so there's no actual waves on the surface, okay? Sometimes I draw fish also, but there's no actual fish, okay? So let's think, what is the pressure above the water? It's atmospheric pressure, so I'll often write ATM like that to remind you that this water is in contact with gas, the room air gas, and gas remains constant in pressure. It doesn't care about the depth stuff we're about to do. So that's why we say, okay, it's just ATM, atmosphere there. And what we want to think about is uh, a cylinder of water in the beaker. What? A cylinder of water in the beaker. So it's an imaginary, imagined, it's an imaginary cylinder. Okay, it's not real, but it's just we think of, here's a little volume of water, like this, like that. Has an area underneath there, A. Okay, so I'm, you know, it's not the side area, it's the, that area, like that. And it has a depth D, so we're going down to D here. We're probing what's happening in the water at depth D, all the way down. Can you explain the physics? Okay. okay. So it's an imaginary cylinder. It's an imaginary shape. Okay. Well, let's see. Cylinder of water in a beaker. Imaginary. And it's all, everything is static. Okay. So what we want to do is calculate the hydrostatic pressure at depth D. That's what we're about to calculate. We call it the hydrostatic pressure at depth D. So depth means how far down from the surface. Right? So that's why I drew it this way. There's the surface. We know it's an atmosphere. Straight down. All right. Well, what we got to do is make a y-axis and say, well, if it's static, we got to go back to kinematics, back to Newton's second law, and say if it's static, then some of the forces in the y will be zero. Static. Right? Some of the forces of the y on what? Well, on this mass of water. Okay, so let's think, ooh, let's do a free body diagram. A free body diagram of that water column. Right, there it is. Well, we know Mg's pulling it down, always. Right, and uh, what else we know? We know there's some pressure on the top pushing it down. So I would draw that vector um, down and say that's P top times the area. It's basically our definition of pressure. The force from a pressure is just the pressure times the area. So we're not getting deep into the vectors and a J hat and all that. We're just going to draw it down. Now what about the pressure down here? It's pushing up. 
So that would be uh, P bottom times A. So we've got the pressure at the top, pressure at the bottom. We've got the weight. That's the only forces. Okay. And we did the negative sign in our head, if you don't see it. Right? When I said the P pressure top is down, uh, the area vector would be considered up. That's out. Right? That would be A. So to make it down, we had to think about that negative sign. But we just did it intuitively. We said, oh, it's pushing it down. Okay. That's what that negative is about. So if you just intuitively could tell that here it's getting pushed down and here it's getting pushed up, you're in good shape. Okay? Okay, so some of the forces are zero. So we say, let's see, this is negative P top times the area. This is minus Mg, and this is plus P bottom times the area equals zero. So here we just treated it like just an object, just a column floating in space, and these are the pressures. But now we can relate them to actual pressures in the problem. Right? What is P top? Atmospheric pressure, right? So a surface right at the top just feels the atmosphere. So this is minus P atmosphere times A. And what is P bottom is just P. We're trying to find the hydrostatic pressure at a depth P or at a depth D. Oh, that's just P. Right? That's what we're looking for. So we plug those in. And then what about Mg? That's the weight we want to express that in terms of properties of the fluid that we've been learning about. All right, so we want to express that in terms of density. Minus rho. See my rho? See, that's a rho. And what do you multiply rho by? To get mass by the, vol by the volume. Right? Rho times volume equals mass. That was in the definition of density. You've got to keep up. But how are we going to get the volume of this column based on things we were given? It's D times A. Ah, rho, d, times a, and are we through? No, we've got to write down the g. There we go. Those equal zero. Ah, p, a, of course. There we go. So the a is going to cancel. A, a, a. And we're going to solve for p. And we're going to get the hydrostatic equation. We're going to get that the pressure at some depth equals the pressure atmospheric at the top plus, we brought this over positive, plus rho dg. The density times the depth times g. All right? And we'll talk about how to use it and what else the atmospheric pressure can be in a minute. Why does P bottom equal P? So we're just looking for this. The, this, the problem said find the hydrostatic pressure at depth d. So that's what we're just looking for. We're looking for P. I called it P bottom just to be more physical, but it's just P. OK, let's stop for five minutes. All right, let's keep going. I've got a few good questions here. So the first good question is, what is rho? Oh, somebody was late to class. So we defined rho at the beginning. Rho is the mass density of the fluid, the mass per unit volume. That's what rho is. I will try to write my rows clearly. Is it always towards the bottom? Um, oh, and I know who it might be. My phone can figure out who you are. Um, is it always towards the bottom? I, I'll come ask after class. I don't know which force you're talking about. Uh, are you going to give us points back for true-false question in homework six? I don't remember that far back. Um, but seriously, if there was some homework and I said I'd fix it and then I never did, just email me, and you'll be in a very long queue of emails. And I will get to them all before we assign grades, I swear to God. Right? <coughs> or if there's one, you're like, oh, I, when I was studying, I accidentally redid it and it took away the point, just email me. I don't mind changing them. It's just it takes me time. But this one, I don't remember, I don't remember exactly what you mean. Um, when will Predge problem two solutions be posted? Oh, soon. So we're pretty soon. I mean, definitely in time to study, probably this week. We just want to make sure everybody turned it in. Um, all right. Okay, so here we were. We have the hydrostatic pressure equation. So let's think, let's just enjoy this equation for a minute. Oh, look at it. Look at how beautiful it is. Um, but remember what it's for. If you have a fluid anywhere sitting around and you want to know what's the pressure at some depth in the fluid, this is the equation. Right? If it's just sitting, if it's static, it's just sitting there, however deep you go, you can always use this equation. Right? This will be the pressure at some depth d. The only thing that might be slightly different is what if you're on Mars and it's not 
14.7 pounds per square inch, and it's like one. You would put a different PATM here, right? So often you'll see it written with this is just P naught, right? We don't want to say this only works when it's exposed to atmosphere. It works when it's exposed to anything. It doesn't have to be on the atmosphere. Most problems have something open to the atmosphere. I'll tell you why when we do a problem. But technically, the book writes that as P naught. So P naught, P ATM. If it's atmosphere, it's ATM. Are the next three lectures not on the test? Oh my god. Um, and then the person clarified, does the pressure have a direction? No, pressure does not have a direction. It's a scalar. It does not have a direction. Self-identifying. Who was late to class? All right. Um, or slept a little bit. I understand. I should be more spastic and keep you awake better. Let's see. OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use this equation and a bunch of problems and to write a law. What if p naught was 0? Uh, yeah, p naught could be 0. That's fine. You could have a vacuum. We'll do that later. OK. Oh my god. Now I'm going to make up another thing. This is not something that is ever written down this way, it's, but I'll call it the hydrostatic law. It's basically a law you can use uh, you know, to solve problems. OK, so this is my, I'm going to trademark that, the hydrostatic law. And here it is, pressure will be the same um, along a horizontal line. If you just apply this, it's the key to all the static problems. Along a horizontal line. And now here come the caveats. Are you ready? Uh, through any, OK, no, that's not the caveat. Through any, and here's the caveat, single continuous fluid. OK? So by that, we mean single means only one density. If you have two fluids, different densities mixed together, we'll do that later. Right now, it just means it's a single fluid, and it's completely connected to itself. It's not like there's some fluid over here and some fluid over here. OK, it's all one flow of fluid. So we're going to draw a bunch of geometries to give you an idea. Somebody's asking, will this always be given? No, it won't always be given. Sometimes we'll give you this, and you have to solve for that. Oh my god. But you'll always have enough information to solve the problem, unless we mess up, and that never happens. Um, <clears throat> when will the chapter 9 and 10 book questions be posted? Oh, they're coming. They're coming, because we know you want to study for the exam. OK, so we're going to draw uh, a bunch of cases, and we're going to apply this law and see what it tells us. OK, so let's draw this. Here we go. Get ready to get your drawing ready. All right, so here is like a beaker, and it's connected to a bigger beaker. Right, and there's some water here. And there's some water here, like that. That's all you know, right? And we have its atmospheric pressure on both sides. Right? First, you could ask, is that even going to be stable? Because you've got more weight on the right side than the left side. So it seems like, will the water flow? And because this one is bigger? No. This is stable. This is fine. So the bigger area doesn't matter. It's still true. Let's draw some horizontal lines. What's the pressure here? Atmospheric pressure, because I drew a line right where the atmosphere is. What's the pressure here? Uh, all along there, the pressure is P atmosphere plus D, rho G D. Right? I just use the hydrostatic equation. That means the pressure. Here is P atmosphere plus rho GD. The pressure here is P atmosphere plus rho GD. The pressure here is P atmosphere plus rho GD. OK? So if it's the same on both sides of the tube, does any water flow through the tube? No. What's the net force on this chunk of water in the x direction? Zero. It's being pushed by P atmosphere plus rho GD this way and P atmosphere plus rho GD that way. So this thing just sits there. Even though this water is heavier than this water, right? This is not pushing, even though it's heavier, it's not pushing harder because it's the same area here. Right? So it, it balances. So that's totally stable. What if we did this? What if we had this? So oh. now what if we went and did that? Don't do it. Oh, I'm going to do it like that. What would that do? See, because now 
the area is changing. The pressure here is bigger than here because the area is bigger. No, it's not. It's just going to do this. Right? What's the pressure here? P atmosphere. What's the pressure here? I don't know. But it's the same here and here. Right? That's what the hydrostatic law tells you. If you say, oh, that's D deep. Do we have to be right on the right on the, pole, the, the tube for that to work? No. It's true anywhere. It's not just at interfaces and just at tubes. It's true anywhere. Here it's P atmospheric plus rho GD. Right? Any weird scenario we give you, if it's not flowing, and it's a single liquid, and it's all connected to itself, this will be true. Let's see if we can make it confusing. OK, what if we have two weird shapes and a weird connector? Happened to me the other day. It's OK. Happens to everybody. Um, there's a weird shape, and the connector does this. Oh my god. Surely that didn't happen. Yep. Happened. I got to a doctor, though, and it goes like that. What's that going to do? Oh my god. Is this going to push it down? No. It'll be also ATM. Atmosphere here, atmosphere here. The little levels will be the same. We could ask, what's the pressure here? Anybody want to shout it out? Ah, uh, yes. PATM. What's the pressure here in the tube? But it's below these. Oh, well, if this is D, it's just PATM plus rho GD. It doesn't matter if it's in the tube or the top of the tube or the bottom of the tube. What's the pressure here? Uh, that's PATM plus rho G H. All right, some little drop. Okay. So the pressure slowly increases as you go farther down. Right? That's all it is. Let's see if that's really true. I forgot to prove that's true. Here is a thing of uh, water, and I put three holes in it. And there they go. Oh, one got blocked with tape in my dramatic. Oh, no, i got to take this off. There we go. Oh, this is messy. My bucket's not big enough. But you can see, oh, hell, let's just pick it up, right? So you can see the top one isn't shooting out very far, is it? No. And the bottom one's shooting out really far because it's, uh, you know, got the higher pressure because it's lower. See? Rho GD. As D gets bigger, I'm going to make a mess. This is my favorite demo because I can eat it. Mm. Uh. <laughs> I hope I've changed that to water because it was... 200 proof ethanol before. Um, oh no, now we're good. Okay, when you all leave, seriously, don't don't slip. Okay, I'm just I need you to keep moving that that way. Okay, no, you don't have to. I'll do it. Okay, so it keeps going. Okay, that's really not a good sound while I'm lecturing. It's like, <laughs> I really need that to stop. Okay, let me get rid of this. This is too stupid. Even for me, this is like. Well, then I'll get it wet and somebody will fall. This is, I just don't know what to do. This is a new demo. <laughs> I have to listen to it. Okay. <sighs> Reminds me of a urologist visit. Okay. Okay, what if we do this? Oh my God, don't do it. Oh, I'm going to do it. Oh, uh, what if we tilt one? Are you kidding me? Uh, what if we tilt one? Is, the, is this going to do that? No. It's going to do this. Mm, PATM. All right? What's the pressure here? All right? PATM plus rho GD. All right? Does it, the geometry of the container doesn't matter at all. All that matters is the height that it comes down. Turn the bottle on its side. Oh, here's an idea. I can do that. Hey, I'm an experimental physicist. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Oh, God, that was that. Okay, it's like this whole lecture is like. Too many noises, OK? <laughs> OK, so the main thing to learn from this is that you can always, if you have atmospheric pressure, you always have a reference. And you can get the pressure at any depth just by the surface pressure plus rho GD. OK, that's the basic law, OK? So now we're going to do a few sample problems, like things we might ask you. All right. Let's see, to see how you're doing. Now, I don't expect you to be able to do all these off the top of your head because you're just learning this law. You'll eventually get used to it. All right, so there we go. Calculate pressure at any point for static liquids in open and closed containers. Oh, maybe we'll get to a closed container before uh, too long. Yeah, we probably won't. 
OK. Next question. Is this possible? You would love this because it would be a true false. Is this possible? So we got a container here, and we've got this thing is slanting down like that in this container, right? And then this one, we got atmosphere up here, and this one we got atmosphere. I'm sorry, it was supposed to be higher on that side. So in this one, we got atmosphere here, and it's slanting down, so therefore it's up here. And this one, we got atmosphere there. Because you know the water wants to fall down the hill. Right? So is that possible? So think about it for 30 seconds. Decide if you think that's possible or not. Well, I clean up some of my messes here. Yes. Is that, and well, OK. Is it possible? Yes. Is it static? <laughs> that's what I meant. <laughs> sure, it's possible. But is that a hydrostatic situation? Now I've given it away. OK, the answer is no. OK, it's not static. Right? Because if it's static, what would that imply? If it's static, then the pressure along this line has to be constant. Uh-oh. That would mean this is ATM. This must be at PATM, but it's not. It has extra, extra weight on it, pushing it down. Right? So if you had this situation, this would come up, and this would go down, and it would be back at the same level, just like every other one of these that I drew. The water level will always go the same if they have the same pressure above them. This is irrelevant. The shape of it is meaningless. It's like saying, what if I had one beaker and the water level did this? Right? Is that static? No. Why? Same reason as this. Okay, the de don't let me trick you with the details of the connection here. It's like a magician. Look at that! Is this static over here? Right? They don't usually act that mean when they yell things. They usually have a more, more of a presentation, you know. Um, now, if you want to know physically why, we could think about um, physically why. If this were to happen, let's look at the pressure right versus the pressure on the left. Right? So why? If this were to happen, let's think about the pressure along this tube. And pretend I drew it flat. Don't worry about the fact that it's at an angle. Okay? The reason is that the pressure in this situation is greater than the pressure on the right is greater than the left. Why? Because this would be pressure atmosphere plus rho g oh, all the way to the same level, but down to d right. See, it's, it's a larger amount, d right, right? And that's going to be greater than the left, which is pressure atmosphere plus rho g. And how much is this one? Oh, it's less, see? d left. Because this one's lower, the hydrostatic pressure, well, it's not hydrostatic yet, is less. D left. So all this stuff doesn't matter. It's because D right is greater than D left. That's like the physical reason. The pressure is high here and low here. And we haven't talked about it yet, but when you have a pressure difference, it causes the water to flow. Right? And therefore, it'll move, and this will go up, and that'll go down until it's eventually static. So that would be like if we said, describe this in a paragraph. You'd say something like that. Okay. Could this be static in quotes? Oh, you're catching on to my use of quotes for everything. Yes. You're going to get a B. Okay. Um, okay. If one side is exposed to a thinner atmosphere and they are stabilized to different but constant heights of the water. Yeah, so yeah, if you were to like have these things on different planets or whatever, if you were to pull a vacuum on one side, then it could be stable. Yeah, if, if the atmospheric pressure were different or if the pressure above the liquid were different. We'll be doing problems like that. I just don't know if we're going to get to it. All right. OK. Uh, OK, here's a good one here. Let's do this one. Um, example two. Is this not static because of the slanted connecting tube? So it is static. First of all, these are all static. That's a good question, actually. Um, I didn't mean to use actually to imply they aren't usually good questions. I solved it as though it were a flat tube. If it were a slanted tube, then we have to start considering the weight of each element of the tube, and it becomes an integral. So that's why I quickly said, oh, let's assume it's flat. We're doing this next, though. OK, so let's do it. But we're not going to do it with a slant, because then that's an integral. Let's do this. Example two. Here we go. Do, 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 do,
So now we just have, kind of like you were saying, what if the tube does something like that? This is going to go to here. Atmosphere, this is going to go to the same level, because I'm telling you it's static, right? Atmosphere, right? So two questions. A, is P on each side of connector the same? And then B, if so, why? And if not, why is it static? If not, why is it static? How could it be static if the pressure on each side of the tube isn't the same? Okay. So I'll give you a second. Think about that. Talk amongst yourselves. Is this not static? Is this landing connected to? Could this be static? All right. All right, what do you think? It's static, nothing's flowing. Sure, the pressure is the same on each side of the tube, but they're at different heights. Mm. <laughs> it's inspired by Mitch. Um, okay. okay, so hopefully you said uh, no. The question was, is P on each side of the connector the same? No. It's static. The pressure here is PATM plus rho G this D, D left. The pressure here is the same, P atmospheric, plus rho G D right. right? The pressure is higher here and lower here because it's not as uh, deep. Right? So the answer is no. No. And then if not, why aren't we getting a flow? Right? We have a case where we have high pressure here, low pressure there. Why doesn't it flow? So sometimes to uh, prove this, you've got to go back to Newton's second law. So what we're going to do to show you and to explain it is F, some of the forces in the Y equals mass times acceleration in the Y. Uh, on the uh, vertical part right here, right, this part right here. Here's some water right here. We want to know, is that static? Is that going to move? Right. So let's calculate it. Uh, let's see. Oh, I should use my notes so I don't screw this up. Oh, there they are. Um, let's take, so what is, uh, how did I do this? Uh, P1 and P2. Okay, so what's pushing it up? P high is pushing it up, right? Say it has some area A. So we'll call that um, high, okay, times A is pushing it up in the Y direction. There we go. Up, and then what's going down? Minus MG is going down, right? And then P2, P low is pushing it down. Minus P low. A equals zero. Or oh, equals what? We're solving for it. We want to see is it static or not, right? So that's some of the forces. Um, so let's calculate these two. Right, so this one is what? It's PATM plus DL. PATM, the atmospheric pressure here, plus rho G DL. That's P high, pushing up. And then minus MG, but we know M is rho times V, but we know V is A times L, but we know L is, <laughs> oh, I gotta convert, yeah. L is DL minus DR, right? This difference. Ah, L is DL minus DR. Okay, now you're starting to see what's going to happen, maybe. And then minus, what's PB? P atmosphere, right? Plus rho G DR, plus rho G DR. There's the sum of the forces down to the elemental little values that we originally had, right? The DLs, the DRs, the Gs, the Ds. And you say, well, here's a positive P atmosphere and a negative P atmosphere. Interesting. And uh, I left a G off of this one, sorry. There we go. And then we have plus rho G DL, and we have uh, minus. Oh, and I left, oh, good Lord. This is a disaster, okay? I left A's off of 
I mean, I left A's off of so much, it's easier just to not write any A's down at this point. Let's see. A, OK. I'm going to get fired. OK, A. All the A's went away is what I'm trying to say. Oh my god. It's zero, OK? <laughs> just do the algebra. It's zero. <laughs> so the reason you don't get a flow is you would think that this high pressure would push and make it go this way, but there's also the weight. We changed our elevation. So this little column does feel a net pressure up, but it also feels its own weight down, and that's how the thing stays static. Okay? So that's the kind of a problem you could do where you have to calculate, apply your little equation at different levels. You needed it here, technically, you needed it here, and you needed it here. Okay? Yeah, let's keep going. Let's just move on. If the algebra doesn't work out, come see me and we'll, we'll work on it. Um, ah, okay. Now, we wanted to talk about covered containers, right? Here we go. So here is basically a demo of what we've been doing. Look at that. It's two open containers. And see how the liquid goes to the same level? Look at the beautiful green liquid. Ooh, it's going to the same level because there's P atmosphere on both the top and the bottom. Okay? Will it always stay at the same level? What if I lift it up? Oh! Oh, it went to the same level. So you can see if both of them are open to the same pressure, always goes to the same level. And really, nothing interesting is happening. This level is P atmosphere, and as you go down, it's P atmosphere plus rho GD. Depends on how far down you go. Even though we have a crazy connector, rho atmosphere plus rho GD. So we could go like that. But now the question that's been on your mind the whole lecture, I know, is what happens if we don't have atmospheric pressure over one of them. Right? That's the really tricky part. So think about it in your brain for a second. If I seal this one, shit. Damn it. Oh, too much drama. Oh, so sad. It'll still work, though. It's sad. If I seal this one, Look at the two levels, exactly the same. Now what's going to happen if I lift it? Oh, you have to think about it while I clean up. OK. What's going to happen if I lift it? How are the menisci going to move? I'm running out of towels for this lecture. <laughs> there we go. I've got on my phone. God damn it. I need to fucking color it green, stupid Jones. I could have made some other color. What's it going to do when I lift this? It's now sealed. What's it going to do? Is it going to move this way or that way? Or God knows what's going to happen at this point. Let's see. What's it going to do? I'm going to lift it. Whoa, they stayed exactly where they were. Look at that. They don't move at all. And this has atmosphere. What's happening in here? I need a balloon to show you. Look at that. What? What? I can pick it up. Oh, my God. Oh, crap. OK. OK, so what we're going to do is calculate. What in the heck was going on when I lifted it up? And you guys were like so amazed. Uh, let's see. This is our problem we're going to do here. I'm literally out of towels. I have no towels. Okay. <laughs> uh, here we go. Let's put it back here. All right. Okay. So in this third example, we have uh, an initial original static um, initial static situation. All right, so it's a standard thing that I've been drawing in just the boring case of two connected tubes like this. All right, there they are, meniscus, meniscus. Okay, atmosphere, atmosphere. All right, connected, blah, blah, blah. All right. And we're going we're gonna to cover the right. Initial static, cover the right, All right. seal it. All right, so now it's at an atmosphere, but it's sealed. It's not free to take any value it won't, or well, it's, it doesn't have the atmosphere holding it at P atmosphere. So I'm not going to put it on there anymore. I'm just going to leave it. Now it's at some pressure. Who knows what? Because now it could change. It could change because the liquid level could go up and down, and the gas is compressible, remember? So we won't use that mathematically, but we do have to keep it in mind. Cover the right, and then raise it by 10 centimeters. So that's basically what I did here is I raise this one by 10 centimeters or so, and you can see the liquid level went up. It didn't stay, stay low. So if we do that, then it looks like this. Um, <clears throat> uh, right, well, we kind of, it goes like that now. And this one is higher, like that, like that. 
And then this one stayed down here where it was, and this one went way up here because it's now covered. Here we go. I forgot what the question was. What is the pressure here? What is the pressure up there? So you no longer can say, oh, it's P atmosphere. Something is only guaranteed to be at P atmosphere when it is held in connection with the atmosphere. But this is no longer held in connection with the atmosphere. Let me pull this down so you can see the board. Okay. So we've got to figure out what it is. Okay. Mm. So I have bullets here to help you think how to do these problems. Let's see. Um, let's see. So the first bad thought, uh, misconception, would be, does it remain P atmosphere since it is sealed? And the answer is no. Right? Gases are compressible. So as this thing moves up and down, the liquid level, see how I drew it? See how big it was here? And look what happened there. It compressed it, except it actually does the opposite. Sorry. Wasn't thinking ahead. Okay, it actually pulls it down. But the point is, just because you seal it doesn't hold it at P atmosphere. The thing that holds it at P atmosphere is not sealing it. It's leaving it exposed to the atmosphere. Okay? So it doesn't remain at P atmosphere. I'm talking about the right side here. Um, right. And to solve this problem, then, we just need this pressure here. We have an equation, but we don't know this. Usually we say, oh, the pressure at some depth is the pressure here plus rho GD. But we don't know the pressure here. So maybe we need the pressure at some depth. Right? Do we know the pressure at any depth? Can anybody tell me exactly the pressure at some depth of this column? Think about if you can figure out how you know the pressure at some depth in this column. How do I read this question? If it is sealed, is the liquid continuous? Yes. The liquid is continuous. Right? It's all one liquid. Right? There is one place where we know the pressure. Here, because of the hydrostatic law. Right? It's PATM down there. Has to be. Right? It's hydrostatic. I know this is atmospheric pressure. I can draw a horizontal line. I'm very good at that. I can even do dashed horizontal lines. And I know that's P atmosphere. Okay. Uh, so, so get P atmosphere at uh, a certain depth. Right, a certain depth. Right. So then you can kind of figure it out. You can say, well, if this one didn't move, and I pulled this one up, and this may get into compressibility of the gas a little bit or something, but let's just sort of solve it this way and say, okay, let's apply uh, the equation. P atmosphere is now the depth part equals P naught, well that's P at the top that we're looking for, plus rho G D. Right? D is the 10 centimeters that we raised it. Rho is the density of water, 0.1 meter, you know 9.8, you know the density of water is 1,000, you know P atmosphere is 101,000 newtons per meter squared. So you put all that together and you can get an actual number. Okay? You'd have to think about whether this moves up and down or not. Okay, we'll get into that later. But in the problem, you could just say it moves it up 0.1 millimeters, and therefore it sticks at 0.1 meters. Okay, so we'll do more problems next time, and we'll get into flow and measurement.